Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. At the pub, EJ slyly makes fun of Eric's claim that Holly no longer has faith in him or Nicole. It's a good thing I'm here to support her, huh? Eric, controlling his anger, says he's sure Holly will come around and forgive them. Holly is appalled by what Eric did to her father and what Brady did to her aunt, EJ responds. She will never get over that, I promise you. Holly is caught by Tate peeking into Brady's room. She acknowledges that she's looking for proof that Brady was driving the vehicle that struck her Aunt Sarah when her looking for the bathroom justification falls flat. Tate understands that she didn't come over to patch things up between them. Brady meets the bald, beefy goon who works for Xander in the square. Brady doesn't know him when he identifies himself as Brian Jones from AA meetings. Although Brian claims he stays quiet during meetings, he has overheard Brady talk about his son. He says he's read about the hit-and-run incident and would want to chat over coffee. Brady flinches in agony as they shake hands. He examines his hand. How in the world was that? Brian walks away, accusing his ring of being overly sharp. Brady shakes hands with Xander's beefy, bald-headed goon in the square. Sarah demands to know what Xander's goon, Brian, gave him at the park. When it becomes impossible to deny any guilt, Xander draws his gun. Brady Black will be dead in a few hours. Though Sarah is horrified, Xander is unable to go past what Brady stole from them. When Sarah angrily points out that he would go to jail for shooting Brady, Xander angrily responds, Brady's going to shoot himself. All Sarah has to know is that there is no way to link any of it to him. She pleads with him to hold off. Sophia stops by the bistro to see how Fiona is doing as she sips on a martini at her table. Fiona invites Sophia to join her since she is ending her workday. As Sophia finishes the cheesecake that Fiona didn't touch, she mentions the college applications she still needs to complete. Sophia replies that her parents want her to become a lawyer or doctor, but she's not sure what she wants to become when Fiona asks. Fiona asks about a boyfriend or girlfriend and expresses the desire that she has time for fun. Sophia mentions like someone, but for the time being at least, he's with someone else. Sophia describes the tumultuous connection between Holly and Tate without naming anyone. Tate may be in love, Fiona thinks, but Sophia doesn't think he has the slightest clue. She believes she can impress him, but he doesn't look past her. Fiona advises that she be extremely clear about her intentions. She must give up and move on if that doesn't work. At the bistro, Sophia, dressed in her server's costume, takes a seat across from a beaming Fiona. Holly tells Tate in Brady's room that she is concerned about their relationship, but it's difficult to see him smiling about his father's freedom. Tate is relieved about that, but he still feels devastated because his mother is already incarcerated. Holly failed to consider that. She is sorry for his or his experiences. Tate feels bad for her as well, but he finds it unacceptable that she would lie and prowl about. Holly says, there's no other way, without thinking. Brady won't be punished if there isn't any concrete proof. After everything EJ did to her and her mother, Tate finds it hard to believe she's working alongside him. Tate tells Holly to go as they dispute. Tate glares at Holly in Brady's room, his hand on his hip and his head cocked. Sarah screams at Xander in the park, flinching from a cramp in her muscles. Xander becomes enraged at her suffering, but Sarah reassures him that taking revenge won't make things better. Xander, being Victor's son, believes that it will make things right for him. Sarah tells him rather firmly that he is not Victor. Furthermore, despite his horrible deed, Brady doesn't deserve to die. Brady made decisions while intoxicated, understanding the possible consequences, which is why Xander disagrees. Conceded, he beseeches. You, too, desire justice. Brady pants and staggers home. He stutters, what the hell is wrong with me, as he approaches the couch. Brady stumbles and distorts his speech as Tate discovers him. Tate helps Brady to bed, furious that he believes he has been drinking. EJ's haughty attitude changes to a grave one in the pub. 
he informs Eric that Nicole can only put him ahead of everyone else in her life. She also mentioned her own daughter in this. It makes sense Holly was opposed to visiting Paris. Her father's killer, Eric, is not the person she needs in her life. Eric throws himself at EJ, grabbing him by the shirt. As Jada rushes in and separates them, he gives him the order to keep away from Holly. EJ returns Holly to the mansion after spotting her inconsolable in the square. She informs him that Tate observed her searching through Brady's belongings. If he continues to stand up for his father, she doesn't see how they can be together. EJ promises to make sure Brady gets his just desserts. Sarah tells Xander in the park that she wants Brady punished, but through the legal system. Xander doesn't think that's true. Remembering the good old days of justice, he draws his rifle. Brian texts Xander to let him know that it's done. Sarah is urged by Xander to return home and stop thinking about it. She questions how she is expected to pull that off. To the depths of my soul, he wants her to always know how much he loves her. In the park at night, Xander ducks down next to Sarah's wheelchair. They exchange a tense glance. Sophia meets Tate in the square after agreeing to keep her drinking a secret and receiving a large gratuity from Fiona. He informs her of his altercation with Holly. She hugs him tightly. She says, tell me everything. Jada gets a call from Sarah at the mansion. There is an emergency. Fiona visits her room later. Sarah claims there's something she ought to be aware of. Tate exits the townhouse, and Xander bursts in. Xander discovers Brady unconscious in his bed and takes out his gun. When Jada knocks on the bedroom door, Xander has to hurriedly hide the gun. She reports that Sarah gave her a call and shared some startling news. Miracles are difficult phenomena. After all, a benefit to one may be a misfortune to another. That's how it usually goes on days of our lives, anyway. Good news for one character can have disastrous effects for their adversary. Or their former partner, or their spouse. Indeed, we are becoming quite particular at this stage. Johnny and Chanel lost their unexpected child not too long ago after discovering that Chanel's pregnancy had never been viable. For the two of them, having another child so soon after losing their beloved one would be a miracle, unless, of course, Johnny wasn't the father. We didn't even consider that to be a problem until recently, but given the direction this body and soul journey is taking, we can now say with certainty that it is inevitable. Even though the show is just getting started, Alex and Chanel are already scheduled for a romantic moment. They're not happy about it right now, and neither is Johnny, but these things happen. Johnny squints and purses his lips at body and soul. Johnny's jealousy will spiral out of control, thereby pushing Chanel in Alex's direction. It can be difficult to distinguish an on-screen relationship from an off-screen one, but those two will first be resistant to one another. Even while they may currently be very opposed to getting too personal, we only need to look to Johnny's dad and aunt to realize how insignificant it is. Once harboring the unwavering animosity of a thousand sons toward one another, EJ and Gabby are now clearly on the verge of romance. Furthermore, at least on the surface, we already know that Alex and Chanel are drawn to one another. Should they resume their off-screen relationship behind Johnny's back and Chanel becomes pregnant? That would undoubtedly be a miracle. But not for the pair that is married. For if the child born to her and Alex was not viable but the child born to Johnny and Chanel was, that would very certainly spell the end for Janelle's marriage, more so than any affair. The biggest insult to the face? If, around the holidays, when Tiny Noel or Noel was due to be delivered, they found out they were expecting, this controversy has the power to split both body and soul. First of all, Johnny would undoubtedly demand that the lovers be replaced or quit over it. It's not like he needs the money, after all. Additionally, it would be a headache for HR and might force Alex or Chanel to quit. Chanel would eventually need to take a maternity break, even if they made it through that, and it doesn't seem like the program has any other performers. Bonnie was just informed by Alex himself that it's being assembled on a tight budget. In Salem. In soap operas, powerhouse super couples are the mainstay. Was Bonnie and Hattie really going to support Salem's own production? They may like to think so, but our suspicion is that they don't.